Join I Am A Watchman Ministries Managing Editor Joe Kerr with co-host Dylan Burroughs, bringing you a fascinating discussion regarding the importance of Bible prophecy and Christian living today as it relates to our responsibility as believers to be watchmen. This is A View From The Wall. Welcome to A View From The Wall. I'm Dylan Burroughs along with co-host Joseph Kerr, and we are honored to join you for today's program. Mark Sutherland is a UK commentator and film producer known for his conservative Christian worldview and his support of Brexit, America, and President Trump. Mark cares passionately about what happens in America and contributes to over 25 independent channels. Mark regularly appears to the Christian network Revelation TV's Politics Today program and is a widely followed commentator on American culture and politics from both sides of the Atlantic. We're glad to have Mark join us today from the UK. Mark, welcome to A View from the Wall. Um, it's lovely to be here. Thank you very much for that intro. I didn't really recognize myself with some of the things you <laughs> said, but that's very, very kind of you. Well, you have a wonderful reputation with your friends here on this side of the pond, but we'll dive right in and start talking about the coronavirus, the COVID-19 situation that continues to influence our globe. This global pandemic remains the top headline in our culture right now. And some say uh, it's just a mild case of the flu, or others say it's an experiment that went wrong and uh, try to blame China in one way, shape, or form. But I'd like to hear what you are getting from your country. What are people saying in the UK about the coronavirus now? Well, it's not going to say anything that I'm about to say now. Um, something, yes, in the past it's gone it seems to have come out from a, uh, a wet market in China, et cetera, et cetera, following those uh, kind of narratives. Unfortunately, it then goes into a narrative now of uh, taking the mickey um, out of or ridiculing uh, the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And, and when the BBC decides to take a 50-minute interview um, or the, the one of the press conferences that the president is doing and then... Uh, then edit that down to one and a half minutes and, and say that he, he was talking about swallowing disinfectant and all this kind of thing. We have those kind of issues. We have those kind of issues uh, going on. One of the big things over here, and it has to be understood, is that it, it suits the left narrative to keep going the numbers of this, the numbers of that. We must have lockdown. We must continue uh, in this particular way because the longer that that continues, then then there is also another precedent going on where they're actually trying to push for an extension in regard to agreeing a trade deal with uh, the European Union. So in a one sense, it's, it's trying to answer the question, but I'm saying that there's a background to all of that. And frankly, you know, they're not going to be discussing the fact that Dr. Fauci gave, you know, 3.75 million or oversaw that in regard to his budget then in 2014-15, with all his links with the CDC, NIAID, etc., um, that gave the money to the Wuhan laboratory. And the fact that they're not going to discuss that in 2017, there's him giving a lecture, um, I believe, in North Carolina and going, well, the Trump administration, they will at some point in the future be facing a pandemic. Now, how would he have known that? We don't even know what, what's going to happen on Wall Street with various share prices. So the, those kind of comments are not, are not out there at all. And as far as I'm concerned, um, something came out of a laboratory. That's one thing to look at. Something has gone, gone wrong. Also, within... Within uh, Wuhan, Wuhan is a smart city. Uh, Wuhan also um, a big 5G city. There is that factor going on that seems highly controversial to even discuss. Then we have to bear in mind that China has a mandatory vaccination um, legislation. I believe that they passed last August. And then they start rolling out vaccines. You then also have to uh, bear in mind the, the whole aspect of the way it follows and controls its citizens in regard to if you are a good citizen, then you can go on the train, then you can play, go on a plane, and then you can do this, that, and the other, e.g. a social score. So they have all that, all that going on, as you are more than aware of. Um, but 
We have then seen signs of people literally falling over to the ground and all this kind of thing. We've seen um, uh, pictures of people being sealed up in their in the flats, etc. We've then heard about people uh, bodies being thrown into uh, fires in regard to morgues and stuff like that. Um, we're not even sure what the death rate was over in China. However, they sat on something for a couple of well, for maybe six weeks. They also, the WHO, the World Health Organization, a particular man who heads that up, was a member of the Tigray political party in Ethiopia that in 1990, America declared as a terrorist organization. So the World Health Organization and China, as far as I'm concerned, are really, really, you know, hand in hand on, uh, on this issue. So... Something came out of China, there is no doubt about it, and that's why the President of the United States, quite rightly, calling it the Chinese virus, the Wuhan virus. And then he gets called a bigot and a racist by the uh, press pack that he has to face every single day, um, and then criticism from Democrats. So what we have is we have a press pack that are also in cahoots with the Chinese, we look at how, how much the Chinese actually own various companies in your great nation, the amount of investment that they've made, the amount of stuff that they've been buying up. All of that has to be looked at very, very serious. So, uh, you know, people have to re remember something very, very important, that China, the Chinese Communist Party, it's a communist country. And uh, the issue is this, is that people like General Spalding, when he wrote a book called um, Stealth War, has been warning about the, uh, the threat of China since 1999, and then was warning about that um, before the end again, very loudly, before the end of last year. Over here, we have had a huge row and debate over the fact that we uh, were asking Huawei to build some of the... Uh, the 5G network in this country. And that's the last thing we should be doing personally in the UK and in the US. Well, that's a phenomenal insight into what's happening in China with the coronavirus pandemic. And when we come back, we'll talk more about Bible prophecy and how it relates to this topic. Stick with us here on A View from the Wall. From I Am A Watchman Ministries, here's today's I Am A Watchman Minute. Did you know there are many similarities in the times in which the prophet Amos lived and in our times today? In Amos's day, there were many places of worship, but few were what they should be. In Amos chapters 4, 5, 8, and 9, we read that the places of worship were well attended, but God was not impressed. In chapter 4, we read, their worship added to their sin. In chapter 5, God hated their feast and would not accept their sacrifices. God wants His church to reflect His passion for reaching the lost, sharing His Word, and extending His mercy and grace. God has high expectations for His people. He wants His people to live well and finish well for Him. Let the I Am A Watchman ministry help you on this journey. Be bold. Be faithful. Be a watchman. Iamawatchman.com Welcome back to A View from the Wall. This is Dylan and Joe, and we've been talking with Mark Sutherland. This is an incredible opportunity to hear a little bit about what's going on in the UK, what's taking place in Europe. And I want to talk specifically in this segment about Bible prophecy. It's a topic that's absent in many American churches. One study we recently looked at said that only 2% of Protestant churches in America speak on any regularity about Bible prophecy. So, Mark, let me take it to you and ask, are churches in the United Kingdom talking about Bible Bible prophecy? And if they are, what are they saying about prophecy? It's a very good question. We don't discuss these issues at all. This is very, very sad. It's also an utter indictment. Have we had a, uh, a call to prayer from the Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the Church of England? No, of course we're not. We're not going to sit, we're not going to be see any part of this. But what we are seeing is that all the churches are locked up. Um, there is no doubt about it, I have to be honest, that some of us like to think that we're informed, and this is not a hobby, this is our life, 
And then this has actually taken taken me by surprise, taken a, a number of us by surprise on both sides of the pond. And we thought that we were awake. Um, so while the New World Order flex their muscles, and in my, in my opinion, we see this push for this integrated digital system to be pushed across the world and to control. Um, no, we're not, we're not discussing any of those over here. I'm sure that we've got, a, we've got a divide where some people are going, well, once we get a vaccine, everything will be okay. No, thank you. I don't particularly wish to have a vaccine. Thank you very much. Not if, uh, you know, Fauci and Bill Gates have anything to do with it. Mr. Gates, if he decides to do a test, it will cost uh, about £227 per person in this country. Then if a vaccine's unleashed, it costs £477. It will make trillions and trillions of dollars across the world. So going back to your question, Dylan, no, we're not. We're not discussing these. I know for a fact where I've heard a vicar in a particular church turn around and go, anyone read Revelations lately? Oh, no, of course not. It's a bit difficult and a bit scary. And then I've heard of another vicar, my friend, a very close friend of mine's vicar who's fully awake, church minister. You know, it's, it's like, um, oh, jolly ho hockey sticks. How is everybody? Um, let's just be thankful for what we've got. Um, I'm going to send you a picture of what I'm thankful for, which is a bunch of jelly beans and Smarties. <laughs> and no, I mean, this is outrageous to me. Outrageous. But this is true. I'm not saying anything that isn't true. Right. And uh, I believe it's beginning of, you know, the real separation, the real divide, wheat and the tares, etc. So asking your, answering your question, Dylan, no, um, we're not addressing this subject at all. That is how bad it is in this country on one hand. But on the other hand, there is a remnant. And I know there is a remnant because I'm fortunate to know a number of people individually. And that through this, through this pa pandemic, and I'm deliberately using that, <laughs> um, look, at, look at event 201 last October in New York. We're through this and other interviews I've done over the last few years. People, you slowly draw people out because a lot of people, when we're looking at Bible prophecy, looking at the subjects that we look at, they feel extremely isolated and very, very lonely. And it means that very often they're not in mainstream uh, churches at all, Dylan. Right. Mark, Daniel chapter 11 and 13 talk about a revived Roman Empire and a one-world government system. And many Bible prophecy teachers uh, have suggested that the Antichrist of Revelation arises from that revived Roman Empire, or sometimes they'll say the EU. You were part of the EU, and now because of Brexit, you're not part of the EU. There are other nations that are also talking about leaving. What does the EU look like in a few years? Very interesting and very good question. I mean, the key is, is, issue is I would never thought that a virus would have completely, met, it looks like it's annihilated the EU um, in regard to the fact that uh, they can't sort the funding out. Where would it be in a few years' time from now? That's if, well, we may not be here. Who knows? Well, we, we could see the Grexit, the Greeks leave. We could now see the Italians leave. We could see the, um, I don't think the Spanish will leave. We could see other, uh, maybe Hungary go, other Eastern European countries go. Um, it could be smaller, Joe, frankly. It could be a lot, lot smaller. When you talk about the Roman Empire, um, very interesting, whether we have to throw the, the Catholic uh, political hierarchy in there. I think that's one thing that we do have to throw in there, thanks, uh, frankly. Um, so, especially with the present Pope and all that, being a Jesuit is all rather interesting. It's going to be smaller, Joe. That's all I can say. Um, where our role is as a nation, if we're the merchants of Tarshish and the lions thereof, it's not Spain. If it's us, in the fact that we do have tin and we're merchants, as an amazing uh, Bible scholar over here, Derek Walker, who is alive to these things, does talk about, you know, that, that's something to be really, uh, really looking for and wary and what our, what our role is in the, in the end times, um, which may be the fact that we, that we turn around and say to various armies that want to attack Israel, 
you know, is this something you really want to do? I can't think of various verses at this moment. So I don't know whether that answers it, Joe, but the whole situation is profoundly different uh, right now. I mean, Germany, one thing this virus has done is just show that people really do need to have national borders back, which, of course, totally and utterly goes against um, what the EU stands for because it wants uh, people to be able to move freely. I mean, Schengen's shut down and all this kind of thing. And then we see uh, what's happening in regard to Turkey, which is allowing um, mass migration from its country into Greece. I mean, poor Greece is that put up with so much. So there's a lot of things in the mix there, Joe, to say the least. Well, that's a great way to put it. And when we come back, we'll talk more about this on A View from the Wall. So stick with us. The I Am A Watchman ministry is supported by people just like you so that we can continue in our call to encourage, disciple, educate, and bring people from all tribes and tongues into a right relationship with Jesus. The I Am A Watchman ministry desires to reach the lost, encourage and equip believers, and prepare for the return of the Lord. There's a great need to share truth and disciple believers. Most in the Western world are not strong in their faith. Billions in Africa and India and in Arab and Asian regions are lost or persecuted for their faith. We want to reach them and equip them. Our vision is to facilitate the multiplication of godly leaders, watchmen around the world. Free I Am A Watchman resources have been accessed by individuals in more than 160 countries, but there's so much more to do. Please consider becoming a prayer and financial partner in this good work. Visit IamAWatchman.com to find out how. Welcome back to A View from the Wall. This is Dylan and Joe, and we've been having a fascinating conversation today with Mark Sutherland from the UK. Uh, One thing we're interested in talking about in this segment is that some of your conservative views, Mark, are simply not popular in the UK, especially regarding American President Trump. It's fascinating to us as Americans that why are people in the UK so against conservative American values? Why do you think that's the case? Because there is a total vilification of those people that believe in nationalism. And what you've got is a fight between globalism and nationalism. It's not a fight between the left and the right. That's what it comes down to. You're either into globalism or you're either into nationalism. And any country that doesn't, isn't in charge of its own borders, isn't in charge of its own money supply, isn't in charge of its own language, and isn't in charge of its own laws, is not a country anymore. And we have to remember the fact that, you know, when Jesus returns, he will judge the nations as well as us individually. It's coming back to judge the nations. Now, the other thing is, is that since the Second World War, since uh, Attlee won and Churchill lost just after the war politically, you know, we as a nation were on our back. We're now back back there. We're on our back now. Just as an aside, um, half of all working adults in the UK are now relying on a government handout. So we are suddenly back there. There was always been a huge socialist input um, since 1945 in regard to um, our nation. That is what is going on. But we have seen a huge push. When you think that within the EU in 2007-2008, the the Lisbon Agreement, which basically was like the sort of constitution of the EU, they redressed it up. They dressed it up as a treaty and pushed it through. But that document had no reference to the, uh, the history of Europe, no reference to the Reformation. So we have to remember, as you quite rightly do, that you know the Puritans left Europe because of religious persecution. And in many ways, I see that we are back there in different ways. We are seeing that, whether that's the deliberate allowance, um, as a fantastic book, Eurabia, the Euro-Arab Axis by Batayor, talks about the fact that the deliberate axis in regard to allowing um, people from an Islamic background to come in to Europe, etc., to change the heritage of it. So it comes down to, Dylan, frankly, it comes down to globalism and nationalism. And what's happening is, is that the globalists feel 
that President Trump stands in their way of creating their utopian dream. Now, the left would love that. Remember, the left, it is without God. You know, there is no respect of God. There is no respect of individualism, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's no respect. The one of the reasons why your country is under assault and you are at war with China, and that may seem offensive to say, fourth generation attack, your, your constitution of 1787, written in September, is the piece of paper that, um, as Stephen, as uh, Darwell mentioned in a fantastic book called Green Tyranny, is the piece of paper that stands in the way of total world tyranny. And that's why you've been under attack in 1963. I think it's in the congressional record over there where it talks about um, the attack from communism, which is, you know, undermining the family, etc. It's all part of the communist manifesto. You were warned then in 1963. Now, on a personal level, you know, my own personal politics, I've been on a long on journey where I've moved from the left to the right and I, I've woken up. But it comes down to, you know, our individual relationship with God. That is what God wants. That's what it desires with his creation. And it's this whole, the whole old fight of we are born sinful. The utopian left turn around and go, no, 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 it's circumstances that create evil. And we have to change all those circumstances. We have to create a level playing field you know, where we can have all universal income and all that. While at the moment, we're bang in the middle, as far as I'm concerned, of a communist experiment. I've never known anything like it in my life and uh, profoundly disapprove of, of the fact that we've decided to lurch off the cliff, the economy of the UK and the economy of the US, thanks to idiots like Neil Ferguson of Imperial College. But maybe I shouldn't be surprised because they take so much money from Bill Gates Foundation. People can go and do the research. It it is it is persecution, Dylan Joe. It is persecution. The heritage of our nation. We took the gospel in the Victorian age all the way around the world, and we have moved away from that. But there's also prophecy and things playing at hand. In nineteen uh, nineteen forty eight, when the Jewish nation returned back to the land for the second, you know, for the second time, um, we um, we didn't do uh, we didn't. We didn't help in the way that we should have done. And we remember the Balfour Agreement as well um, of, you know, in the early 1900s and the fact that we had promised to give more of the land to the Jewish nation. And we've been under judgment for that as well. And fortunately, we, we had come out of tyranny after joining the EU in 1973. But um, after that very sort of limited uh, celebration, was thou, thou then walked into tyranny again in regard to what I see going on across the world right now. Mark, we have a collection of watchmen and women around the world who face all kinds of the opposition and persecution that you're talking about, but they still find a way to live out their calling to watch, warn, witness, and finish well in these difficult last days. We like to close out each program with a word of encouragement from our guest and a word of challenge directly to that watchman community. So from a watchman in the UK, what's the message for our watchmen around the world? Wow, what a question. Well, Hosea 4, verse 6, you know, says, my people are destroyed through lack of knowledge. And our responsibility is, is to stand on the walls and to put the shofar to our lips and to blow it as hard as we can and to continue to warn so we make sure that the blood is not on our own hands and it's to do the role that we're called to do and then it's up to people if they want to listen. And I think the encouragement is, is that there are a number of people waking up. They are waking up. They're seeing what's going on and the way things are unfolding. And people are asking some very serious questions. And our role is to lead them to Jesus and to point the way. And it is salvation in Christ. So that's our role. It sounds maybe a simplistic answer, but it is the only answer. Um, and those opportunities are happening. So we just need to continue to pray for those uh, um, opportunities. I, for one, just today had a very, very interesting uh, meeting where you suddenly realize that, yeah, maybe I'm born for such a time as this. And that applies for all of us. We are in the biggest spiritual battle of our lifetime. We are living through 
unprecedented event that goes along with living through um, a world war. And that's what we are. We are at war. But just to uh, encourage each other, try and connect with each other, trying to reach out, find other people of like mind to encourage you, but to keep going because it is the gospel. That is it, period. That's such a good way to conclude today's program. I hope you've been encouraged by the words you've heard today from Mark Sutherland. If you'd like to get more information about Mark and his website, please check out marksutherland.org. If you're checking us out online with the podcast, you'll get his information in the link down below. Mark, thanks so much for being with us today on A View from the Wall. Absolute pleasure. It's been uh, lovely to stand with you today, so thank you. And of course, we'd like to encourage you to go to our website as well at IamAWatchman.com. IamAWatchman.com. You can get tons of resources on Bible prophecy, on spiritual growth, on Christian worldview. We'd love to help you any way we can. So reach out to us there. Thanks again for being with us here on A View from the Wall. We'll be with you next time. A View from the Wall, in association with I Am A Watchman Ministries, exists to equip a worldwide audience with biblical truth, sharing it with others, and being prepared for Christ's imminent return. The team seeks to encourage, inspire, and equip watchmen for such a time as this. For information about the ministry and upcoming events, visit IamAWatchman.com. A View from the Wall is made possible by the team of dedicated pastors, editors, and the many contributors of I Am A Watchman Ministries. To support our efforts, give online at IamAWatchman.com and click on the Donate button. Thanks for listening, and join us again next time on A View from the Wall.